Thank you very much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about using 1099 processing in Sage 100. Let's take a look at our agenda. So we're going to first look at accounts payable setup, a little bit of vendor maintenance, take a look at the payment history report, and then get into the Form 1099 tax reporting and using the e-filing and reporting application. In Sage 100, let's take a look at our accounts payable setup options and just talk about a couple of things here. First of all, to do 1099 reporting in Sage 100, you have to enable the option. So our first thing is to make sure our checkbox is checked here so that we can actually do 1099 processing. The next option is going to ask us what our default 1099 calendar year is. You can actually print 1099s for any of the calendar years that you wish that you have information for. This is just the default. The next thing we're going to look at is 1099 information in vendor maintenance. Back in Sage 100 then, we're going to look at vendor maintenance. And I'm going to call up a vendor and go to the additional tab. And you can see we've defined this vendor as a 1099 vendor. So the vendor type is business, the default form is miscellaneous, their taxpayer ID and their default box number. We could also push the 1099 history button and we could see the information for how much we paid this vendor that is subject to 1099s in that particular calendar year. Be aware that this information is editable, so you can correct the data here if you need to do so. Let's just click OK and close that. Next, we're going to take a look at the payment history report in Sage 100. In Sage 100, there's a report that you can use as an audit of your 1099 information, or if you neglected to set up the vendor as a 1099 when you have been doing processing for the vendor for the year, you can print this report to find out how much in payments you've made to that particular vendor, and then you can go into the 1099 screen and edit the information to make sure it's correct. That report is the payment history report. And there's just a couple of options to select on this report to make this work. One is you want to make sure that you sort the report by vendor number. Two is you want to check the box to only print this information for 1099 vendors. If the vendor is not set up as a 1099 vendor, it won't appear on the report. So you want to make sure you've done that prior to printing the report. Then we're going to choose a period range. And obviously, this is our calendar year. And then I'll just preview this. So as you can see, for the vendor Anders Auto Repair, we've made payments of $7,216.50. And for Tax Consultants Inc., we've paid them $1,835. So again, we can now use this information to verify the information that's in the 1099 screen and edit that information if we need to. Let's go ahead and close the report. So now let's take a look at 1099 tax reporting. So now that we've verified the 1099 information is correct, let's go ahead and print our 1099. So I'm gonna to go to the Accounts Payable Reports section and choose Form 1099 Tax Reporting. And we're gonna get a message that the e-filing and reporting client needs to be installed and do we want to proceed. So understand that for a few years now in Sage 100, Sage 100 does not actually print 1099s. There's a third-party application called Atrix that is used for printing the 1099s. And this is telling me that Atrix is not installed on my workstation. So we're going to go ahead and install it. Now, I do have an option to say yes here, and it will try to install it. But in my experience, it's better to install it as a standalone application. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to say no to this question. And I'm going to navigate to where I have my Sage 100 installation programs saved. So give me a moment to find that. And I'm going to go run this as administrator. And this is going to give me my splash screen. And I'm going to choose productivity applications and install federal and state tax reporting. And this is going to come up and let us install this application. 
Well, our installation is completed and all I've done is exit out of the screens that I opened to do the installation. So our next step is to go ahead and open the application. Now, when we open the application, there's also going to be a message that we need to upgrade the reports. So let's take a look at that. Back in Sage 100, I'm now gonna print on Form 1099 tax reporting, and we're no longer going to get that message about needing to do the installation. And as you can see, we have our company information here. I'm gonna choose the miscellaneous type, and you can see our default 1099 calendar year has come over from Sage 100. You can set minimums here. So you can set your minimum payment amount of $500 for any of the boxes here that you wish, but I'm not going to do that. We'll go ahead and just let it continue. So I'm gonna say accept, and we're gonna get this screen. And this is telling us that there is a forms update that's required to make sure that we have the latest forms. And we're gonna go ahead and do this update. So I'm gonna click on the automatic update button here, which will allow it to go over the internet and download and update the forms automatically. On occasion, I've had situations where this doesn't work, where I've had to do the download manually, which is also another option here. But let's go ahead and do the automatic update. Okay, our installation and our upgrading our reports has been completed. So now we should be able to move forward to the next step, which is the actual printing of our 1099s. Once again, I'm gonna go to Form 1099 Printing and I'll choose the miscellaneous form type and accept. Now it's checking for the forms to make sure we have the current forms installed. So basically the 1099 printing is 100% wizard driven. So you just go through a series of steps here. So our first one is asking whether we want to print these for real or we wanna do a test drive. And I'm gonna do a test drive. So you can go through this process, do a test drive, make sure your data is correct and all that kind of stuff before you ever get to the point of printing your 1099s. It's pulling my taxpayer identification number from my company setup. I'm gonna say I'm gonna use a single 1099 file. And it's verifying the information. Now I do have to have a phone number, so I'll just make one up here. And go next. I'm filing for my company or employer, next. If you have state 1099 information, they would show up here. I don't, so I'm just gonna go next. Do I have any recipients who have elected to receive 1099 forms only electronically? I'm gonna say no. And there's a couple options here. You can decide how you're going to handle their tax ID number and whether you're gonna print zeros. I'm just going to accept the defaults, go next. Now it's pulling the information from Sage 100 as it's doing this, and it's gonna open a screen and it's gonna go through a series of validations. So it's gonna make sure the tax ID formats for your vendors are correct. And it's going to make sure that the information is complete, those kinds of things. So the first thing is to do is verifying recipient taxpayer identification numbers. So that's what it's doing here. Now, if I had one that was defined as a business, but it had a social security number, or if it's defined as a individual, but had a business ID, that would be a problem, but I don't have any problems. As you can see, I only have these two vendors that I'm doing 1099s for. So I'm just gonna go next. Now it's validating that information, next. It's validating name and address information, and we can scroll and see all this information. So it's just making sure the name and address information is complete. We'll say next. It's validating the boxes. So we can scroll through some of this. And as you can see for my two vendors, I do have the information in box seven. Now understand this information is also editable. So I can click into a field and change the number. Remember the data did come from Sage 100, but we're no longer in Sage 100 here. We're in Atrix. And you can change the number here and correct the information and print the correct amount on the 1099. However, at this point, this information does not write back to Sage 100. So you can change the number here and then later go into Sage 100 and correct the number just to be safe. The other thing is once you printed and sent your 1099s out of Atrix, you don't have to make a change in 
Sage 100 because Atrix will save copies of your 1099s for you and you can reprint them out of Atrix. You don't have to redo them out of Sage 100. But I'll just go next. And like I said, it's just a series of validations here until we get here. And you get a sales pitch. So you can have Atrix print and file and send your 1099s for you for a fee. But understand, printing the 1099s locally so that you can send them to your vendors is at no charge. And you'll see that in a moment. So I'm just gonna go next. So as you can see here, you can have Atrix do the entire thing for you. And in my case, it's $24.95. So basically there's a flat fee plus a fee for each one. So $2.29 for my two in addition to the flat fee Anyway, my total is $24.95. I've seen a lot of clients look at this information and the amount that it's going to cost them to have Atrix do everything for them is less than buying a pack of the forms. So this is an option to really be aware of. Now, if I don't want Atrix to do this, I'm gonna check other options and just print my recipient 1099s and deselect the e-file options here. So all I'm going to do is print my 1099 copies. My total cost is zero. So again, you don't have to have Atrix file print, send and file for you, but you certainly can. And we'll go next. Once again, they'll let you know that you can have them do it for you. And we'll go next. And it's just gonna give us a validation of what it's gonna print. And we're gonna go next. And we're gonna get the printing screen. Now we're in test drive. So we're not gonna print 1099s for real anyway. But what you'll be able to see here is what the 1099s look like. But when you print the 1099s, you're going to print them on the form if you're printing them locally and not having Atrix do it. You're going to print them on the form. And the form is already going to have the text printed on the form. Well, Atrix is smart enough to know that. So it, when it prints to the local form, it knows not to print the text. But as you can see here, here's my Anders and there's my number. And I can go to the next step. It's gonna ask if I wanna print it, I'll say no. And then there's an option to print the instructions. Now understand this is all pretty self-explanatory as you're doing it. So there's the instructions, go next step. It'll ask if I wanna print the instructions so I can say no. And when you're done, it's just gonna come up and ask you if you want to increment your default calendar year to the next year so that when you do your 1099s the following year, the default year is correct. So if I were to say yes to this, it would change my default 1099 year and my accounts payable setup options from 2020 to 2021. And then next year it will already be set. So here we are back in our agenda. So we talked about accounts payable setup, make sure that 1099 is enabled. In vendor maintenance is where you define the information for the boxes and things like that. Be aware that the default box is box one, and most often that's not the box you want the information to go to. Often it's box seven, so when you're setting up the vendor, make sure you change the default box to box seven. You can always change it in the editing of the information if it's wrong. We talked about printing the payment history report as an audit report of the 1099 information or just using it to enter the 1099 information. If we neglected to set up a vendor as a 1099 and we process payments throughout the year, we can still print this report, identify the amount that we paid the vendor and manually go in and put in the 1099 information. Then we talked about the e-filing reporting. It has to be installed on the workstation that you're using for printing the 1099s. I showed you how to run the installation program from where Sage 100 installation files are stored. If you're not aware of that information, obviously you can contact us or someone that in your organization that knows where that is and run the installation program, but we'd be happy to help. After doing the installation, we updated the reports. Every time you go in there, it's going to check and see if any of the reports are not at the current version to update them. I highly recommend that you update the reports. Even if the reports that you're not using currently, I highly recommend that you update them. And then we went through the printing process and it'll show you how the 1099 is going to look and you can print them to your local printer. 
Now, if you're doing it for real and you're not doing a test drive and you print the 1099s, it will prompt you through printing the 1099s. The other federal forms, it'll also ask if you want to print file copies and you can print your file copies. What's really nice about it is when it prints the file copy, it'll actually put a watermark on the page that says file copy, so you know that's not the one to send, all of that kind of stuff. And again, it's very self-explanatory as you go through this. But if you have any questions, let us know. You can contact us at our YouTube channel information. You can contact us via LinkedIn. Our website is www.nymphasociates.com or you can contact us at erp at nymphasociates.com or call 877-454-3200, extension 6346. Thank you very much.